Hello everyone! In today's video, we're going to update our templates so that they reflect our more complex models. We're also going to use a few new filters. Let's go ahead and add our authors to a single book template. Remember, authors is a many-to-many -many field, since a book can have more than one author. I'm going to use a for loop to display all of the authors, iterating through each one, one at a time. I could just print out the author, which will use the value that I return with the model string method. What if I want to format it differently, though? Just like any other object in the database, I can display the attributes for that object. Here, I'm displaying the author names in a different format. Now, when I load up the page, they're in that order. What if we have no authors? You can add another block to the for loop called empty. This will only show if there's nothing to iterate over. In my template, I'm going to add an empty block which will print out no authors if a book has no authors. Now, if I load a book with no authors, I get this text rather than a blank space. Another great thing that templates can do is filter data, changing how it's displayed to the user. The first filter I want to show off is the date filter. With this, we can change how our date is displayed on the page. First, let's add the date published to the page, so you can see what it looks like without any filtering. Not bad, but not ideal. To filter a template variable, you put a pipe after the variable name, and then the filter you want to use. For date, we put the word date, and then the format that we want to use. In this case, I want to just display the month and year, and I want to display the month as a string rather than a number. If I reload the page, you can now see the date is now formatted how I want. This is just scratching the surface for what this filter can do. I recommend taking a look at the rest of the options in the Django docs. This isn't the only filter we can use. Another one allows us to format how numbers are displayed, which is useful when dealing with currency. Because the price is stored as a float, we're going to use the float format filter. Let's go ahead and add price to our template so I can show you what this filter does. As you can see, my price isn't quite formatted like I normally would want. I'd expect to see two decimal places, but Django stopped at one since the price was $10.20. If I always want to show two decimal places, all I have to do is add the float format filter to my price and tell it to always show two decimal places. This will both pad out the decimal places that wouldn't normally be shown, but it will also round to that decimal place if needed. Here you can see my price looks much better. Like dates, I recommend checking the docs for more about how to use float format since there are quite a few variations. Another neat yet underused template filter is default. When you use this filter, you can tell Django to show a different value if the value given would evaluate to false. Remember that with Python, false, none, zero, and empty strings, dictionaries, and lists evaluate as false. Let's say we want to change how publisher displays, since I might not know what a publisher a book had when I entered it. If I reload the page now, rather than seeing nothing, I see publisher unavailable. Another important filter is safe. By default, Django will not render any HTML that's stored in a text field. This is for security reasons, since a user can wreak a lot of havoc by injecting nefarious JavaScript in a text field. So it's important to remember that the safe filter should only be used when you trust whoever is entering the data. Let's update the way the blurb field is displayed, so we can add some basic HTML to it. For that field, I add the safe filter so that any HTML tags I have in that field are rendered. We reload our page, and now some of our words are bolded, and we have proper paragraphs. Another template tag I often use is cycle. Cycle works with for loops, cycling between two or more values every time it's encountered. This is super useful when dealing with formatting tables, allowing you to do alternate styles to make them easier to read. On my book listing, I'm first going to change it to a table rather than a list. Then, inside the rows, I'm going to add cycle, and use the cycle variable as a style for that row. At the top of the page, I'll add the styles for the rows. This isn't the best place for this since it should be in a CSS file, but this is just for demo purposes. Now, if I load my book listing, my books are shown in table rows and the rows alternate styles. The last tag I want to show off is one that no one sees, but is super important, the comment tag. The comment tag works just like a comment anywhere else. It's not rendered. Here, I'm going to add a comment to my listing to remind myself to add more columns to my table. 
If I reload the page, the text doesn't show. In fact, the text isn't rendered at all, even as an HTML comment. And that's all I have for today. In the next video, I'll go over adding third-party apps to your project and using a requirements file. And thanks for watching.